Blog Talk Radio. We've been awfully quiet, have we? Lost you in the static. Behind the scenes doing damage. Full savage for the family. New status, bitch, get at me. Wrong turn with the eddy. Wouldn't walk down my abbey. Ooh, from the wrong side of Kelly. True, straight bullet to your body. I should track my tally. They quiet, how we got a death valley. If they're talking wildly. They want me badly, you'll regret it, buddy. Come collect the bounty, settle debts around in trouble, met allow on flowers, kept in family, funeral, roll your family. Right for these niggas, I'm a ghost. Right for myself, I'm the GOAT. Used to keep for freezing with the stove, with the bro. That was back when I was 20 years old. In the queue with my roots, still planted in the coast. Make you getting nasty if I triple up the gross. Make a bitch naked and blow. How was no for different women with us, got some different strokes. I'm the man back home. I'm back home, Riverside, motherfucker. Got the juice in the post. They got shade, they got salt, they got played after the soul. They got played, I got paid. I make waves, I make dough. I just roll with the punches. I might some assault. They ain't throwing no punches, they claiming the soap. Talking the talk, now I rip out the throat. Get on IG and pose. Ain't that traveling? Y'all know why they always so dope. I'd rather skip it through the aqua. Ay, turn the groupie, see the follow. Ay, probably swimming in the brother, not too awkward when you color. That's the hardest to swallow. Ay, the advanced, think I need me to a katana. Get a phone, have them dance, show the talent. Money working in my wallet, make a I got pasta. I should fuck around and buy a bitch. Copy on the product. I'm a girl one like that. Name another motherfucker, throw all like that. Refer on Skynet, preserve and fight back. Looking in the mirror while your mirror tight jack. The server I max, the bureau hides that. Pushing interference down, arrows type less. Arrow Digress, her hair up, digest Press a couple women in the crew on sight deck If you on sight, yuck On 10 with the shit, I'm signed up With a back, go shit, who's tight up Money on the line, I'm tight up Make a move out here, work my duck Ay, Make a noise out here, don't mind duck Ay, Wait for you, little bitch, don't try us Ay, Little bitch, don't try us We back, little bitch, don't try us Kiss say, she only fuck with you to get the rent paid. Bad little, mm, from a mixed race. Money healer habits like a gin day. Couple chips, do swimming in for 10 days. I can model at the uh, very tip day. In the kitchen here, feeling like I'm been great. I wanted Willis to do my intro track so bad. Like, I'm out of breath because I've just been dancing and bouncing around. Whoo, I don't even need no introduction right now because, okay, maybe I do because some of y'all don't know who I am. This is Nakia and you're live right here on another episode of Indie Fire. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm going to tell you, like, in, in, in 30 seconds flat why I'm so excited because I, I had some sleep, guys. I had some sleep. Like, like you don't understand. Like, I slept. For the past two nights, I slept. It's only been like five hours, but I slept, and it's the first time I slept, like peacefully slept in three years, peacefully slept. Granted, I had to drink a little bit before I went to sleep, but I slept because school is over. I'm done. There's no more school. I don't know what to do with myself. Like, I need to get a, a hobby and stop messing with, you know, married men, but I need I, I need to. I need to get a hobby, but I slept, guys, I'm, and so now I got all this, this energy, right? I got all this energy. So, as you all know, I'm still looking for that intro track. I don't know. I don't know if I'm intimidating people by telling them that I need this intro music. I don't I don't know what it is, but starting next month and that's like next next Thursday, I have to have this intro music for season 3. And there's so many people that have to have the beat, you know. What is the problem? Like and I'm paying you to get it done. So I don't understand what the problem is. Like Come on, people, you want me to write it, and then you just put your voice to it? I'll do that for you. I'll, I'll do it. But I really need this music, okay? I really need the music, all right? So um, that was Willis. Oh, it's, we're back, and we will be back stronger and bigger than ever next next Thursday with that music. I have faith in, in you guys, all right? I really do. Um, Willis was our 2018 Indie Fire Music Awards Best male hip hop winner. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that was that was him. That was him. Out of Riverdale, California with We're Back. I right, very quickly, um, if you've been following the news, you know, I don't like to get into politics and this is really not political, I don't think. Um, but if you've been following the news, ASAP Rocky is still over there in Stockholm, Sweden, um, being held, um, charged with assault. He's been held since, what, July 3rd, I do believe. Uh, what I haven't really been following it, just the fact that the president 
or you guys, president, is, is supporting him. I don't know if he's trying to obtain the black vote or what, but the fact that he's supporting that is just blowing my mind. I don't uh, – maybe I need to get more in-depth in it and, and try to figure that thing out. But, you know, I, I hope that um, he returns to U.S. soil very, very soon, very soon. Also, in the news, um, today would have been the 78th birthday. I'm probably lying. It's probably like the 76th or the 75th. Um, you guys know how I am with my notes. The 78th birthday, I do believe, of Emmett Till. What's so significant about um, this is earlier this year, um, three students, were found, or a picture was found on a personal Instagram page of three students. They were posted with guns. Um, beside his memorial, all right. Um, there were University of Mississippi students, and they took a picture um, with guns posted beside his memorial. The plaque that commemorates um, where he was recovered from the Tallahatchie River. River. Um, if you don't know who uh, Emmett Till is, he was a 14-year-old black youth who was tortured and murdered in August of 1955. An all-white male jury um, was acquitted, um, or they acquitted two white men accused of slaying him. And these three fools decided to go uh, with guns. And, and the plaque had actually been shot up. And they, they're saying that they don't know if these three fools actually were the ones who shot the plaque up. But they had the audacity to stand in front of the plaque and take a picture holding guns. <laughs> um, and um, earlier this week, their fraternity actually suspended them. Not to be confused with our Kappa Alpha Psi, but um, Kappa Alpha their fraternity that suspended them. So uh, we're going to keep following this case uh, because it's not it's not over. Um, but it just did come to light this week, uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. And again, he would have been 78 on today. Him until rest in peace to him. If you follow me on Facebook, I posted earlier today, probably about an hour ago, um, 2017, there was a humongous breach with Equifax, um, and now they they have a uh, 147 million people were affected by this breach, a data breach, right? So now there's a 425 million dollar settlement that may have affected some 147 million people. Um, go get your money. I right, go get your money. File the claim and get your money. We're talking one hundred and twenty-five dollars, right? Even if you weren't affected or you don't think that you were affected, like I don't know if I was affected or not. But when I put in the last six digits of my social security number, it told me that I was affected. So yeah, I'm gonna get my money. I don't even remember this happening, but I'm gonna get my money. All right, my mama gonna get her money. My grandma gonna get her money because I put their socials in and they said that they was affected. So go get your money. All right, if you need. That uh, website, go to my Facebook page because it's posted, or I will send you the link. All right? Just trying to look out for my people. All right? Get your money. As always, it's not about me. It's about my guests. And I'm super excited to have this gentleman here this evening. Um, one reason, because I've been struggling. I've been struggling for the past two weeks on how to pronounce his name. And I spoke to him before the show, and it was like this bell went off in my head, like, duh. It's it's so simple, not to mention the bio says, you know, how you're supposed to pronounce it. I thought really slow, super duper slow, super slow. Uh, but I'm, I'm super excited to have him here with me this evening. One reason because, um, you know, I say this all the time, once you're on the show, you're a part of the family. And our guest on Tuesday has become a very integral part of my life. On a daily basis, Fred is always pouring into me um, one way or the other, whether it's something comical you know, whether it's something life-changing. And this young man I met through Fred. And so I already feel like, you know, he's he's a part of the family. Um, anyway, 
Uh, I'm talking about music producer, engineer, and artist Double O. And y'all, y'all follow along with this with this bio, okay? Because it's gonna confuse you just a little bit, like it confused me. But just follow along if you're not reading along, right? He was born in the Bronx, New York, and raised in East Point, Georgia. The artist globally known as Double O. First began his music career professionally as <clears throat> Double O. All right, but there's a play on this, okay, because it's the spelling, all right? He now is known as D-U-B, B-U-L-L-O-H. Initially, it was D-O-U-B-L-E-O. Y'all got it? Keep up. The name Double O derived from the year he began to take music serious, 2000. His music is inspired by the feelings, thoughts, and struggles of the everyday person that wants more out of life. In 2011, Double O released his first professional recording. To date, Double O currently has one album, one EP, seven singles, and over 650,000 spins on Pandora's radio stations, Double O Radio. Summer 2016 was a heated summer filled with police brutality and racial issues. In the midst of this, Double O managed to get major live news coverage for his G-O-Y organization, which helped to strengthen his following greatly. In mid-2017, Double O began hosting his very own radio show, tuning music, turning music into money to educate and empower independent artists. Also, in mid-2017, he appeared on the legendary Patti LaBelle's album cover, Bell Homage. Well, I feel, I feel real, I feel like I'm, I got celebrity status up in here this evening, y'all. I'm going to read that again. Also, in mid-2017, he appeared on the legendary Patti LaBelle's album cover, Bell Homage. From radio show host to music producer to engineer to artist, Double O is expanding his brand on a daily basis. For the latest updates on this artist, please visit his website at double O.com. Indie Fire listening audience, my followers and supporters, I present to you this evening our special guest, music producer, engineer, and artist, Double O. Such a pleasure to be on the show. I forgot it. Hold on. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'll be waiting, and I forget I'm the one who's got to do it. All right, so here we go. Music producer, engineer, artist, double O. Thank you. Thank you. You're far too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the one who got to hit the button. I'm forgetting, you know, I'm the one who got to hit the button for the applause, you know? It's all all good. It's all good. I I greatly appreciate the intro. It was great. (laughs) So how you doing this evening? I'm great in yourself. I couldn't be any better. That's what I'm talking about. I'm right where I want to be. That's what I'm talking about. Good, good. Good, good. I like to hear that. Yes, well, you know what? I wanna, I really wanna What's jump that? right in this interview because I have a okay. ton of questions to ask. But you do have a caller, and I do not want to keep them, you know, just hanging on. I'm sure they got something okay. juicy they want to ask. They might want to sit back and just rock with you. But I'm gonna okay. jump on the caller. Okay. Hey. Caller, you're live right here hey, on Indy Fire with Nakia and Double O. How you doing? Or well, they might just want to sit back and rock with you. Maybe. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yep. It's all to the G. So I've been listening to to your music. I normally do not listen to to you know the guests prior to the show. I want to be mm-hmm. um, so startled. I just like okay. my guests. Uh, just like my listening audience, when the guests, you know, when I when I hear the music, I want to just <gasps> be in awe, just like that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. something told me, you know, just just go listen, and that's what I did about two nights ago. I started listening to one track. I think it was Pandemonium. I, I started okay. listening to that one, and then I started listening to another. Anyway, I wanted to listen mm-hmm. to all of them except the two that I'm going to play this evening. I, okay. And that's something that I never do. I never do that. 
So when I go back to the beginning, where did the passion um, for this industry come from? Mm, great question. Great question. The, the passion came from, I would say, I had a, I had a buddy back in the day that uh, did music. He was a singer. And um, I never knew anybody that can just, you know, sing and do music and go to the studio. And um, that kind of intrigued me because I used to always rap Snoop Dogg stuff. And um, I just liked to rap it. I didn't know I could actually do it myself. So I just would do other people's stuff. And uh, once I started trying to discover, you know, the writer in me, that's kind of where the passion came from, the writing aspect of it. And then I just started trying to uh, put it into rap. And so when you began, what was your mission when you first began? Mm. I was just trying to get people to hit me at first. Like, if if people liked it, that was like a million dollars to me at that time. You know, it was like (laughs) to get my sister to say, yo, that was hot. You know, that was like the mission accomplished. But I couldn't get Mm -hmm. that accomplished. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't get that accomplished. So, you know, um, you know, it was, it was hard work to get her to, you know, give me the thumbs up or give me the A-OK. And I uh, just had to really stay hard at it. But just to get acknowledgement at first was, was the was the uh, thing. It wouldn't be no big-time rapper. Yeah. She was the, the person that you really needed in your corner. Because I feel like yeah. the artists that I manage, I tell them you always, you never want to go to your family that, or your friends that are always going to be, giving you the thumbs up and telling you that, you know, yes, oh, oh, your music is fire. And then you send it to a station and they go, what the hell is this shit? You know, do you actually get slapped in the face? You get that disappointment when, you know, you've been given the big head all this time. You know, people have been boosting your ego and you're thinking that your mm-hmm. music is fire when in actuality, you know, no. So your sister is who you needed in the corner. And so you perfected your craft. Your sister is who you needed. Exactly. You're exactly right. A hundred percent right. Did you come from a musical background at all? Nah. Nobody in my family um does music. Not at all. Wow. So in Not listening to your music, I find that your flow is um it differentiates. Like I know you have a lot of um artists featured on your music so I mm-hmm. wanted to listen to be able to tell who you know um, if I would be able to know who you were because I never heard mm-hmm. you before if I would be able to know mm-hmm. who you were on on mm-hmm. each of your your tracks um, mm-hmm. and your style is different it's unique but it, and it's different But I and I couldn't tell who you were on every track where do you find or how, how do you describe your musical style well, I'm going to say this. Um, the tracks that you may have thought was featured was probably me um, because there's really not a lot of features <laughs> on my music. But um, I just like to be different. I get bored easily with one uh, consistent sound, and um, I like different cadences. So I would describe my style as um, whatever the track needs at that time, because I, I cater to the track. I don't cater to my style personally. If it's a boom bap track, I'm going to give you a whole different style. If it's West Coast, I'm going to give you a West Coast sound. If it's down south, I'm going to give you the down south feel. Um, so I kind of just cater to the track because I think that's what everybody uh, wants. I think everybody wants uh, what's best for the song. So I don't, I don't try to uh, make the listener struggle with my sound. So I try to give the track what it needs. In writing, stay right there with that Mm -hmm. subject. When you Mm -hmm. write, do you write according to what your audience wants to hear? Or do you write from personal experiences? Do you bring your life into what you write? Or do you kind of follow what it is, you know, your listening audience wants to hear. You, you. I mean, I've done a million radio interviews. You've asked the best questions so far, so I'm, I'm really excited about this interview. I just want to let you know that right now. But um, <laughs> in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, uh, I used to write from my own personal experience all the time because that's all I had until I figured out how to write from your perspective, how to write from my homeboy's perspective. 
he has a situation mm-hmm. going on. I'm going to write about it from his perspective. I'm going to write about it from the girl's perspective. So I, that's when I turned into a songwriter. So I left my feelings out of it and, and, and focused on what was best for the song at that point. But in the beginning, it was all my um, – personal feelings and thoughts and this is the way I want to do it and, you know, catering to the fans. But now it's more so um, this is what the track needs. What is the track trying to tell me? What is the music saying? So I get more so into that so that it'll become a, a whole piece of work that way versus me just trying to sell you something that really shouldn't be sold on that particular track. Mm-hmm. Now, what's your songwriting process like? Do you start with the lyrics first or the beat? Well, um, in the beginning, I'd go back to the beginning. I used to write with uh, over people's tracks. So back then, um, beats was not just flowing around. So you had to catch the end of Tupac when he gave you a little bit of the beat, and you had to rap on the end of that. Um, (laughs) You know, and then you had to kind of, you know, just come up with something out of your head. And then, you know, you find out when you start coming up with stuff in your head, it's really hard to put a beat to it because it's not fitting just right. So you got a bunch of raps that's just written. And, um, you know, it's just like whenever I get to use it, I use it. But now I call it being like a lazy writer. I have to have the beat. I don't have to have it, but I don't feel like trying to find a beat that goes to this or make a beat that goes to this or anything like that. So, I like to already have the track in place. And, um, you know, I used to write on um, paper all the time, and then I switched to just doing it like uh, almost like a freestyle type and recording it as I go as far as recording it in my voice recorder and then being able to do that. So I can do both. I can be able to write it down physically, and I can just come up with it just off the top like that and, and, and do it like that. So I just had to challenge myself. But the writing process for me now is um, just vibing with the beat for a few and um, coming up with the cadence. May not have the words exactly, but I hu- I get the cadence together and then I put the words in. And sometimes, you know, stuff comes in chunks as far as uh, phrases. And then um, the writing process begins. Normally I get that first verse done very fast and then uh, I marinate on it. And then second verse comes and the bridge or the hook or whatever comes. But the hook is always first. Then the – the uh, the verses for me. Yeah. So in going through your music mm-hmm. a few days ago, I like mm-hmm. to go chronologically. So I think okay. I started with like year 2015, I think it was. Okay. And then worked my way up to 2019, 18. Okay. 19, okay. One of them. Mm-hmm. How has your music changed from when you first started? To what you just recently put out? Uh, drastically. Experience growth. Can you hear the growth in your music from four years ago compared to what you're putting out now? Big time, big time, drastically. Um, the musicality of things is more important to me, more than just being a rapper. Four years ago, I was just a rapper. That was it. Um, if you ask me, a year ago, I was just a rapper. Um. So it was just really concerning myself with the lyrics and the, and the, and the style. Now I'm more um, cognizant of uh, my tone as far as how it needs to be mixed, how it needs to be, you know, like becoming a, a total engineer. So the sound of it has improved so much. So now that improves my writing process because I know certain things you don't want to kind of jumble up. Some stuff I used to jumble up in the beginning. Now I put more space in there to give it more of an ad-lib feel and, and crank the people up some because a lot of times I put a lot of things into a verse that kind of goes over people's head. They didn't get it because it's not enough space in between there. So it's just I'm getting real technical with uh, my process now. But uh, it, it helps every aspect of my process, the, the writing process and the mixing and, and all the other stuff. So it's a drastic change. Before it was just get on the track, rap, I don't care how it sounds. It don't have to be mixed right. I don't even got to get it mixed. Just Let's just put it out. So it's a whole <laughs> process now that uh, I'm proud about. <laughs> and I speak to so many different independent artists, and they're so focused on um, just being able to be that artist that writes mm-hmm. their lyrics 
and get their music put out. They don't really mm-hmm. understand the technicalities of the industry. They don't understand that there's business to the industry. So yep. you find that being able to not only write your lyrics and put it out, but now that you're able to produce also an engineer that has afforded you, you know, um, the, the capability to be able to hear the difference in your sound, um, make the needed corrections, um, and, and hear a different quality in your music. That's what you're saying? Exactly. So it's full circle. I, I just I exactly. need other people to stand behind what I've been preaching for the longest. It's full circle. You have to know every aspect of this industry. You cannot just be the artist. You no, have that's to over know with. every aspect of this industry. Yeah, that's over with. It Those days vital. are over. Vital. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you want if you want to be around in in what the music business is becoming and is now, you have to you have to expand your horizons because everybody can rap. That's just the facts yeah. of it. Everybody can rap. You know what I mean? So that's not nothing special. At first it was like, wow, he can rap. But now, you know, a, a five-year-old kid can rap better than most of these people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, 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 and that's fine. But you have to know how to put a whole package together. And the whole package is being able to sell something that, that's not in the market right now. And um, it's, it's a lot of room for that right now. On which of your songs do you feel that you have delivered your best performance so far from a emotional um, and from a technical point of view? Well, it's probably not out right now, but um, currently that's out. It will be Nightlife. Hmm. Talk about it. Nightlife is a party song. It's an energetic song. It's a worldly song. Um, I just, I had so much energy and passion for it. And um, I love I love doing all kinds of music, but I think people would say I do party music the best um, because a lot of people compare me to Flo Rider or Pitbull or something like that. But then that, they'll say I sound like Tupac. So this particular song, Nightlife, uh, it just has the energy. It has the sound, and um, you know, Tasha Tasha Couture did a, a wonderful job, uh, you know, singing the hook, and uh, I think it was just executed great. Well, I want you to be the judge. This is Nightlife, double O featuring Tasha Couture, right here on Indie Fire.
drinking all night in his hole. We up all night in his thing, drinking all night in his hole. We up all night in his thing, drinking all night in his hole. We up all night in his thing, drinking all night in his hole. Hey, yo, what's good? It's your boy, Jerusalem, from the Scarfella Music Group. And you on the air with the hottest station, Andy Fire. Andy Fire. With your host, Lil Timmy and the Kia. Right here, right on the here, station, right here, right all the hottest right hip-hop right hits, right Andy Fire. Andy Let's Fire. get it. Let's Fire. get it. Let's get it. Woo, boy, I'm in here tired. I'm tired. I've been here bouncing around and dancing. Yes, but you that that was Pit Bull. Uh, for you new people who may not know, I don't know why you would know, you know, know Pit Bull is because he's still making music. But yeah, that was Pit Bull. Like I wish now that I would have listened to that like two days ago. <laughs> That's definitely going in the playlist. Oh my gosh! Thank was, you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Who, who is she? Where is she at? <laughs> Oh, she on the map now. Cause see, what happened was I got in early. That's Tasha Couture. She um, she produced uh, Kiki Palmer's new album that's coming out. You, you know, Kiki had a, a a hit single, and that song um, "Water" by Joe Gifted. She produced that. She's a producer. She's a singer. You see the video? It's on my Facebook page. It's called Nightlife. She's in the video. We cutting up in there, and uh, she's on Tasha Couture. Check her out. That's my home girl. That's who used to uh, do all my music as far as engineering. And uh, put it out. She recorded that song actually. Look, I'm already, I'm already on her page. Look, I got to delete. You got to, you got to go to Tasha Couture. Yeah, she, yeah, you got to, you got to <laughs> holler at Tasha Couture. She, she, she mostly deals with Instagram now. Go to Instagram and check her out there because you'll see everything. Going on. She's doing some big, big things. I'm already on her her website. Um, yeah, I got to delete. I'm sorry, I got to delete some of y'all off Facebook so I can add it. Let me get on IG now. That's right. Yeah, this I, is right. I got it. <laughs> That's right. I got it. Wow. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want to talk about your organization. Um, oh. and I want to back up to the, the summer of 2016. Um, I okay. actually did see a little bit of the the clip from on YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. for you all who have read the bio, if you just click on, um, you know what? Just I don't. Oh. You know, I'm going to post it later because I don't think this bio actually has the clickable link for the YouTube. I think the original bio had that. But I want you to be able to watch um, just a little bit of the, the YouTube, um, the footage from the YouTube. But talk about your the GOY organization and exactly what went down in the summer of 2015. Well, I was driving uh, an <clears throat> 18 wheeler truck, and um, this is when um, all the police brutality was going on not to say that it's not still going on but um right. it was just going on around you know in dallas and everything like that and um atlanta decided to protest and uh i wound up in the middle of the protest out of nowhere and um you know i wound up doing a <clears throat> news interview with the news and um it, i just took the opportunity as well you know it was a great five minute interview because the news it, i knew i was going to be on live uh radio i mean excuse me live tv so uh, I just took the opportunity to plug um, my team at the time and what I was building, and uh, they loved it. And I loved it, and it was a great interview. And I also touched on topics as far as, you know, what we needed to do to move forward as far as, you know, uh, community and, 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 and um, to cut this stuff out. You know, I know it's not going to stop, but we have to do something to, uh, you know, combat what was happening. So, um, I, I just spoke on it, and um, I just used that opportunity to um, to get the word out, so to speak, because you're not you're not going to get live TV access like that. So you have to be able to be crafty. 
And so that was three years ago. Does yep. your um, does your brand still continue to um, go hard in the community? And you put the word, you planted the seed three years ago. Um, have you continued to water that seed? Well, three years later? Um, in my own way, yeah. Because my 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 whole GOI organization is moving in a different um, way. Move, I'm uh, it's totally reformed now. So now I'm in the process of just really kind of uh, restructuring a lot of things, retooling and, and, and getting some things together. But yeah, that is still the plan. That is still the plan to um, to make major moves in the community. And um, I do what I can, but I, I had a lot more access to do a lot more once I had a lot more people um, that was uh, affiliated with it. And I think that that is so important that um, that we um, in this independent uh, community as, as artists, as, as authors, as entrepreneurs, um, that when we have the capability to plant the seed, that we do continue to water it or that when we sow the seed um, or plant mm-hmm. the seed that we do continue to water it that so that it does continue to grow and and it's so funny that I said that at the same moment that I said that somebody planted um, a seed in me um, mm. the individual the individual made a post today on Facebook um, mm-hmm. and I'm sure she's listening to the show she, she made a post today on Facebook that drop your cash app information and just plant a seed into somebody. And it didn't matter if it was as small as a dollar. Share this post. Mm-hmm. Did you have to do it today? You could do it at any time, but just share the post. You never know what mm-hmm. somebody was going through, you know. And so I shared her post. I dropped my mm-hmm. name. I shared her post, you know. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she just, she just um, sent me money through Cash App, which was so funny because we were joking about it. You know, it's something that we had done last year and decided to do it mm-hmm. again this year. Just watching, you know, people's testimonies on Facebook and on IG and um, things that they were giving, you know, just, just praising God on what he had been doing in their lives. And, you know, um, I, I made a post yesterday and all I said was paid in full. Nobody questioned mm-hmm. me. They just liked it. And, you know, um, nobody questioned what I, I was talking about. Um, but I was mm-hmm. actually talking about my daughter's tuition. My daughter goes away to college next month, and I mm-hmm. said paid in full, and her fall tuition is paid in full. And so, um, yes, yes, her tuition is paid in full Ooh. for the year. Blessing. All right? Blessing. And so even yeah. if she got, you know, crazy scholarships, she got scholarships, she got grants, um, but she did have a balance for the year. And it is now paid mm-hmm. in full for the year, not the semester, but the year. All right. Mm-hmm. So, um, but for her to just just do that, as I was mentioning, uh-huh. so in speed, you know, um, yeah. the Lord just works in mysterious ways. He really does. Um, so it, but it is important, you know, that when we have a brand and we are standing on platforms and we have people that are underneath us that are that are watching what we do and that we are trying to incorporate in them, you know, that that in order for you to elevate to the next level, you can't just stand with your fist closed and expect, you know, your brand to take off. As you, it can't happen that way. You know, so That's as right. long as you're pouring into them what it is that they need to be doing, um, you got to make sure that you're continuing to um, pour into what it is that you initially planted. So mm-hmm. I think I, I love the interview. So you all, I'm going to post that link, and if you get the opportunity to just to watch it, it is very short. Um, it, it won't take you long to watch it, you know. But just take notes on what he said, and and do that, you know, for yourself and for your community. Um, but the GOI organization, just, can you just talk about that a little bit? Like where where did you, or why did you start that? I had a lot of friends around at the time um, that were I knew they were useful. And I knew that they had gifts and talents, but um, we needed to kind of come together in order to to push one another and um, to kind of push a a, a narrative. And um, I put the play together, and it, and it had a good run. It had a great run, and uh, we got some things accomplished. It, it didn't move in the direction that I knew that it could have, but um, it sparked a lot of 
uh, activity as far as, as far as mentally awakening people to what we could do together as far as a, a collective, you know. And um, I, I, I just, just decided because I was like, look, I know my music is good. I know um, this one here's music is good, and, 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 and this one has a talent, that one has a talent. So we just kept bringing people on. And, um, you know, it just, it kind of, after after it got so kind of out of control, then it, it got to be a point where um, it was hard to kind of, get people to see the original vision for it. So uh, it had a great run, though. It had a great run, and uh, we did it in award shows, GOI awards. We were giving awards out to the people in the community. We gave out um, uh, organization awards, like best organization. Um, you know, it was different kind of awards. It wasn't just uh, centered around entertainment. So uh, mm-hmm. we gave out about 11 awards, and um, we was going to go in that direction as well, and and uh, we had a lot of different things we were doing at the time, and um, we had like a little radio thing going on, and there was a lot of things going on. But it's it's hard to kind of keep all of that going when you don't have the infrastructure uh, properly right. set up. <clears throat> right. Yep. I feel you. All right, so one album, one EP, mm-hmm. seven singles, mm-hmm. and over over mm-hmm. over over six hundred and fifty thousand spins on Pandora. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute your success? Persistence. Just persistence and and listening to the people. Because they'll tell you. They'll tell you what you need to do. And uh, they give you ideas, and they just keep you going. All you got to do is just show up. And what I mean by show up, I mean just keep writing your songs, keep getting it out to the people, keep shooting your videos, keep doing what you do. And... um, the people will support it if you keep listening to them, but you got to listen to them because they're trying to tell you something. <laughs> so would that be the biggest piece of advice that you would offer to somebody? I'm just starting out, but they're listening to me right now and they're hearing me say mm-hmm. 650,000 or over 650,000 spins. Um, mm-hmm. Would that be the, piece of the advice that you would offer to them? No, the advice I would offer to them is read, <laughs> get a book, called uh, All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald Passman. Get the ah, latest version yes. of it and read it yes. from front to back. <laughs> read it yes. from front to back. Forget the spins. Forget Two everything times. else. Two times. Yeah, read it. yeah, you got to read it at least three times just to understand what he's talking about because <laughs> half of those terms, you're not even going to understand them. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you got to get that book. You know, read the book because in this, in this industry, uh, I'm signed up uh, with a uh, subscription it's a free subscription right now. It's called Music Alley, um, mm-hmm. and you can sign up for it if you're a music manager or whatever like that. But, see, this is where they kind of tell you what's coming, stuff that you ain't going to hear about for years right. or stuff you're going to hear about in six right. months. But, you know, it just tells you all of the things that's to come. So you got to get a lot of reading going. If you're a writer, you should be a reader as well. Yes. And um, yes. you should be able to, you know, read uh, what's coming up so you can make your proper adjustments so you're not behind the eight ball and trying to figure mm-hmm. out, you know, where the industry is going because, you know, there are, I wouldn't say gatekeepers, but there are trendsetters that already know mm-hmm. what's going to be the next hot thing next year, next two years. So they already gearing themselves up just like uh, you got to think, like Lion King just came out and uh, mm-hmm. they dropped it right before Leo season. So that gives yeah. people another thing to think about. Okay, Lion Leo. I mean, this is all strategic. So you have to be yeah. able to read and you have to be able to um, know what um, strategic marketing is. So it's a uh, it's a lot to it. It's a lot to it. My gosh. So that I would say read. That that's I, my. That's... I despise. I despise mm-hmm. my mentor. Um, when I first hooked up with him, have been in the industry for thirty five years, and every day. Mm-hmm. I have, I mean, I he had me doing assignments. Um, I read, and I swear, I read eight hours a day, and I couldn't grasp it. In the beginning, I couldn't grasp it. I couldn't understand it. Mm-hmm. I was like, why are you doing this to me? Like, I don't understand it. But, you know, after maybe three months, it all started to make sense why I had to read so much. Um, And, you know, by six months, you know, like, I was literally trying to take over his label, you know, by a year, you know, he was letting me run things, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm, because he mm-hmm. saw I was thirsty, um, and I had the desire and he knew that I was capable and I could do that. Um so mm-hmm. that that is vital. That is vital. You have to um have the ambition, you have to have the drive. You have to want more than just to be the artist. 
you have to know the industry, all aspects of the industry. You can't, like you said, you can't just be that artist that writes the music and, and puts the music out. You can't do that anymore. That works 20 years nah. ago. That doesn't work today. You know, as things nope. are changing by the hour now, no, you can't <laughs> yep. just do that anymore. Yep. So, yeah, this industry changes, you know, by the hour now. So, yeah, you can't. That, that right there, that's the best advice I've heard on the show. You, you can't do that anymore. You can't. Mm-mm. Thank you. Thank you. You yeah. can't. You really can't. What would, you, what would you say has been the biggest barrier for you as an independent artist? Um, trying to figure out how to effectively market to where I'm not <laughs> spending unneeded cash mm. on certain things and figuring out how to be more effective with my marketing and um you know it's a it was a it was a challenge doing that because first at first you think your problem is the people just ain't you know um feeling they hating they doing this or whatever like that yeah. but no it's you it's you not being more effective so uh that's basically what has been it so i put together a lot of marketing strategies and, and been able to figure it out Hell, I have that problem right here on the show. Like, I want to spend money on everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's, it's tempting. So, so yeah. Yeah. Very I want to jump into this this, um, this final track. I, I first want to know the the reasoning behind the title. Um, Twerk Master. Okay. Um well, yeah, okay. we couldn't think of a we we could <laughs> we couldn't really think of a, a name. We couldn't think of a name for it, and I mixed this song about maybe a million times, like literally. And I kept having to differentiate what it was, so it was like, okay, I know we're saying twerk in here, but it was just twerk master because I was like, man, I'm tired of seeing this, and I was like, this this has got to be the name of the song because we was trying to figure it out for a second. But it's off the upcoming album that I'm gonna uh, put out soon, and um. You know that's that's kind of where it came from. I, I just I feel like it's something for the for the for the ladies uh, on the urban side of things, and uh, I think they'll like it. And it's featuring my new crony. Well, it's kind of old homie, uh, but uh, new new partner in crime, uh, Jew Major. Jew Major is uh, the the producer on maybe about eighty five percent of my music right now, and uh, he's incredible. You got to have him on the show separately from me because he got a whole other thing going on. But um. He's uh, heavily on this song. He's heavily on this song. And uh, to me, he's a musical genius. Um, trust me, by the time we release this project, it will be known and will be seen. All right. Here you have it. Uh, Ferg Master. This is... Let's get it. What's his name again? What's his name again? Jew Major. J-U-M-A-J-O-R. All right, so we gotta have him back on the show. Uh, separately, we'll get him. When is when is this project dropping? My project, uh, I can't, I can't, I want to come back for that because when I'm ready to it, because I'm not, I'm not in the process right now. But I definitely want to come back and talk about it when when I get closer to the date. I'm just plotting. I'm plotting because I can't have you two here at the same time. So, I right, so we'll we'll have him back. You know. Sometime after that. All right. So here we go. Here no, we he go. can come. He can come. He can come before that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So maybe he's listening. You know, get yourself scheduled. Get yourself scheduled. Here we go. There guys. it is. Charge master. Double O. Oh. Let's get it. Somebody's gonna have to give us some booty, and it ain't just as simple. I like booty. This is nothing that I'm ashamed to admit. Stop. Boy, that boy you doing? Let me see you twerk. Twerk, girl. Put that phone down. Work. Boy, right now I'm kind of thirsty and you the thirst. Stop. Whatever you doing, let me see you twerk, work. Let me see you twerk, work. Let me see you twerk, work. Let me see it, let me see it, let me see you twerk, work. Girl, go to, go to, work, 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 work. Girl, go to, go to, work, work. Shorty in the front, no she bad. Hair swinging, ears blinging, pocket full of buns. Buns, turn around, all I see is ass. Told so me to come, come, I'm about to run for it, run. Nice body, no stomach. And 
She told me no lipo. Uh, I told her, her you gotta tread softly. Hey, Ask to make a man hey, psycho. Hey, hey, told me I don't wanna wreck your life. Don't worry, girl, I got Geico. Hey, told me to take a stab bed. I put my mask on and went Michael. Oh, hell, girl, look what you done done. You done done. One more song, two more songs. You ain't done. You ain't done. How you did what you did got me sprung. Got me sprung. You at work, go at home. As soon as you hear the song, come on. What that boy you doing? Let me see you twerk. Work. Girl, put that phone down. Work. Work. Right now I'm kinda thirsty and you the thirst. Stop. Whatever Stop. you're doing. Let me see you twerk. Let me see you twerk. Work. Let me see you twerk. Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see you twerk. Work. I love the way these women be so confident with it. Look at them when they be jigging, they be getting it. Especially from the islands, they be wildin'. Don't throwing ass everywhere. They be swinging from the air. Yep, yep, all the way up there. Get up down. down. Bring that ass right here. Work. Put it in my lap, girl. Make it bounce right here. Work. Is it real or not? She said, put your hands right here. Dripping on the cheeks like this. A nice ass right here. Right here. Stop. Whatever you do. Let me see you twerk, twerk, girl. Put that phone down, work. Right, right now I'm kinda thirsty and you the thirst. Stop. Whatever you are doing, let me see you twerk. Shake, 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 shake it there. Shake it there. Climb the pole and try to throw it, girl. I double dare. I double dare. I got hundreds in my pocket. I give you a pair if you can work, work. Show me you ain't scared. Let's go, let's she say that she wanna leave. She wanna leave. Go get a room. Picture a whole lot of me. Whole lot of me. A whole lot of you. A whole lot of damn, damn, that's a lot of ass you been toting. Woo! I bet that pussy Woo! cat is super Woo! soaking. Let me get off in your ocean. Stop. Let me get Boy, that off boy you doing? Ocean. Let me see you twerk. Twerk. Girl, put that phone down. Don't work. Don't Work. Right now I'm kinda thirsty and you the thirst. Stop. Whatever Stop. you're doing, Stop. let me see you twerk. Work. Let me see you twerk. Work. Let me see you twerk. Work. Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see you twerk. Work. Now, what's good? It's your girl, Jana Blackwell, C-Town Records, Mistress of Soul. And you're on the air with the hottest independent station, Indie Fire, with your host, Nakia, giving you that heat right here on the station, bringing you all of the hottest hip-hop hits, Indie Fire. Just tuning in, you're live right here on Indie Fire with your girl, Nakia, and my special guest, music producer, Engineer and artist Double O. Yes, I wasn't in your Let's get it. I don't, I don't twerk. I, I don't, I don't twerk. I got grown kids. They, they tell me I can't, I can't twerk. So don't li- don't yeah. listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? I I, I was talking okay. to some friends up today, and and they were like, you know what? So so what you gonna do? Because you actually your house is gonna be a little empty very soon. And I said, you know uh-huh. what? I'm I'm going to live. I'm actually going to mm-hmm. live because I'm I'm losing my, and I'm not losing, but I do have two kids that are leaving. My oldest, my oldest returns tomorrow from California. He's been gone for a month. He returns in the morning and then he'll be here for probably 10 days. And I do believe they leave um, on like the 12th, they leave on the 12th of August and they go to Texas for two months and then they, they deploy to Kuwait for 13 months. Mm-hmm. And so oh. in one week, I'll lose two children. My, my son will leave on the 12th of August. My daughter will leave on the 15th of August going to college. So I'll be left with mm. the two children, my, my middle son, um, who's a junior in college, and my, my younger son, who's starting high school. So I said, you know what, I'm actually going to live because I've been in school for the past three years, um, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm going to have a social life now. Like, I don't know how to, to act. So 
my girlfriends and I, we're planning like all types of shit for September, for October, for November, for mm-hmm. December, for January. Like we're planning all this stuff that we're going to do. Go. And they're like, you ain't doing nothing because you've been a homebody for the past three years. And I'm like, no, I'm, 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 I'm really going to live, you know? So yeah, I might get out there and twerk, you know? Oh, no. Yeah, you're going to put on that twerk master and then make it happen. That that's the first hey, step. Hey, that's, that's the first I'm step. Work it out. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to be in everybody's city. So trust and believe, if I told you I was coming to see you, I'm turning up. I'm coming to see you. Bet. But this is like the is. best part of the show. This is the best part of the show right here. This is when we mm-hmm. play our game called Either Or. We spend the whole episode talking about, you know, your music career and what you've mm-hmm. done to get to this part in your career. Um, so now we mm-hmm. talk about your personal life. You know, we give our okay. listeners just a, a little bit of your personal life, right? So okay. there's nothing, again, that you have to think in depth on. You uh, have a choice. Either it's going to be one answer or it's going to be another answer. All right? Okay. You ready? Okay. I'm ready. Sure? Here we yeah. go. You like, you like Frosted Flakes or Lucky Charms? Lucky Charms. Yeah. Nah, okay. Lucky Charms like and shit. <laughs> yeah, I, that used to be my favorite cereal, but I had some Frosted Flakes today, so I'm, I'm going to go with Frosted Flakes today. All right, you like basketball okay. or football? Basketball. Yeah. 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 All right, are you adventurous or cautious? Adventurous. I I you like Snickers or Kit Kat? Kit Kat. You like rum and coke or gin and juice? Gin and juice. <laughs> you like washing dishes or doing laundry? Washing dishes. Do you think before you speak or do you speak before you think? I think before I speak. Hmm. You like Yay or Jay Z? J Z. Cardi B or Nikki? Cardi. Hey, you like honey mustard or barbecue sauce? Barbecue. Your woman got to be older than you or younger than you? Older. Hmm. <clears throat> Angela Bass or Michelle Obama? Michelle Obama. Uh. Last one, Coke or Pepsi? <laughs> Coke. <laughs> hey, all right, okay, all right. Now, at, normally at this point, my co-host will tell you what you want, but since you know I don't got no co-host, um, I'll get back to you on what you want. All right, thank you for playing. Okay. This is the part of the You're show welcome. where the floor is now open to you to get all your contact information out for those who may be listening live. Those who may come back and listen on one of the many playback shows. I'm if they're interested in working with you, collaborating with you, getting you on some tours, getting you on some shows, um, interviewing you, whatever the need may be, the floor is now yours to get all your contact information out. All right. Now, this is your main man, Double O. You spell the name D-U-B, then you pause for a second, and then you put the B-U-L-L-O-H in there. Now, you can find me all over the Internet, Google me, whatever like that. So you can find you can contact me, uh, Gmail. Uh, double O D U B B U L L O H at gmail dot com. That spells double O. Um, you can also hit my text line. It's a text line. Don't call it because I'm not gonna pick it up. It's a text line six seven eight three two one eight three eight two. We can talk about features. We can talk about mixing. We can talk about recording. Let's talk about whatever you want to do and uh, hit me up there. Um, also, new albums coming out very soon. Can't talk too much about it, but uh, we got some bangers on there. Of course, you just heard Twerkmaster. Uh, shout out to the to the uh, homie Jew Major. Uh, he's coming in a major way, and uh, we're working on his album next. And uh, shout out to Caso. I know he's listening. Big shout out to the homie Caso and everybody out there that's listening. Big, huge shout out to Fred for putting this all together, man. Fred, I see you, homie. I greatly appreciate you sticking with me and hanging in there with me, dog. And, um, hey, man, com. You can check me out, of course. Go on Pandora, listen to all my music, D-U-B, B-U-L-L-O-H. When I drop this album, it's going to be crazy. I promise you we're shooting videos, we're having fun, we're getting money. And there you have it. Make sure you're following uh, the show on all social media platforms. 
That's the Indy Fire, E N Z I E F I Y A. Make sure you're following me, the Girl in Motion, G R L N M O T I O N, on all social media platforms. Tune in on hmm, next Tuesday for Too Late Tuesdays right here with author Chanel. We will be debuting her newest book. With, uh, what do we have? We have a book release. We have a um, cover release. We have a title release. Yo, I'm so excited because I've never, re- never, never, never done this before. We've done, we've done uh, album release. We've done, um, we've done some other release, but we've never done a title release. We've never done a cover release. We've never done whatever the other release I said we've done. So I'm super excited that she chose this plat- platform to do all of these releases on. I'm so excited. Um, so 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here next Tuesday on Indie Fire. We close out the month. Yo, I'm super excited also because you guys know what January, January, July 31st is, right? That's like the, next to my birthday. That's, that's like my favorite day of the year, right? And I'm sorry. I said I was going to be on my best behavior tonight. But July 31st is National Orgasm Day, right? And so mm. we're going to talk about that next Wednesday, Tuesday, next Tuesday, because it's, you know, we're not, we don't air next, next Wednesday. So we're going to discuss that a little bit prior to, you know, our interview with Chanel, because that's my second favorite day of the year, right? Then on Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, no, we start a new time. New time next Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be back here with Pet Series author Pamela Folan. Yes. The month of August, I have to be on my best behavior, guys. I got some fancy people coming up in here. Fancy, fancy people, like some doctors and shit. I'm all excited, guys. Like, the people watching me now. So, shout out to Andy Fire because you, you're doing it, guys. You're doing it. I'm so excited. So, Pamela Folan will be here next week. And then we have a special episode on next Saturday. Dr. Monica Biggerstaff. Monica, my Monica did this. Hi, right, girl. Shout out to you. I love you, baby. Over there in Germany, got this interview. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys with a quote, as always. Um, be with someone who loves you harder on the days that you can't love yourself at all. That's far away. <laughs> Until next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, double O. Thank you for being here. Yo. Very welcome. Thank you. Have a- You're welcome. Anytime. You Have a good night. You too.